Hello good day viewers. In this tutorial we are going to learn how to find the derivative of cosine x from the first principle. We know that if we are given a function f of x which is equal to cosine x, once we differentiate it you are going to get negative sine x. So now let us prove it uh, from the first principle. Remember that from definition f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the function f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So now let us substitute everything here. Remember that our function is cosine x. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. It means what cosine of x plus h because we are replacing x with x plus h. So this is cosine of x plus h. The minus f of x is nothing but cosine x. So we have cosine x right here. Divide by what? h. So this is the limit we are going to evaluate in order to get the derivative of cosine x. Before we apply the limit, let me take the whole of this and simplify it. So this is what we have to simplify, but before then let me show you something or remind you something. If you have cosine of a plus b, which is double angle, this is the same thing as cosine of the first angle a multiplied by cosine of the second angle b minus sine of the first angle a multiplied by sine of the second angle which is what b the only difference is that if you have addition here you use subtraction here if this is subtraction you should use addition here that's just the difference so we are going to use this to expand this so this is equal to cosine of x cosine of h this is not hyperbolic cosine then we have minus sine of x sine of h and don't forget to subtract this we have minus cos x the whole of this divide by h now you can see we have cosine x here we have cosine x here so let us bring them together so this is equal to the cosine x multiplied by cosine h the minus cosine x which is the last term then you bring this term which is minus sine x sine h divide by h. We are only simplifying the function. We have not started applying the limit yet. So from these two terms, we have cosine x in common, so we can factor it out. So we have um, cosine x outside. Inside, this will be left from the first term, which is cosine h minus. This is already out. We have 1 right then minus sine x sine h the whole of this divide by h we are moving now i want to split the fractions we see we have two times to the top i'm going to distribute the denominator upon the two times so we have cosine x multiplied by cosine h minus 1 divide by h i only decided to bring h here because this is the expression that contain h then minus i have sine x then multiplied by sine h divided by h so now we have two separate fractions we are not going to apply the limit again here so now i would like to multiply this fraction by the conjugate of the numerator the numerator is cosine h minus one it conjugate will be cosine h plus 1. So we have a cosine x here multiplied by cosine h minus 1. So I would like to multiply this by its conjugate, which is cosine h plus 1. Then I will divide by h multiplied by cosine h plus 1. So I have just multiplied the top and the bottom by cosine h plus 1. Cosine h plus 1 divided by cosine h plus 1 is 1. So multiplying anything by 1 will not change that thing. So minus sine h, sine x, sorry, multiplied by sine h 
divide by h. This is nothing but difference of two squares, right? Which can be what? Expressed as cosine h squared, that is cosine squared h minus 1 squared, which is just 1. So our expression becomes cosine x multiplied by cosine squared h minus 1 squared, which is the same thing as 1, then divide by h multiplied by cosine h plus 1. We are moving minus sine x multiplied by sine h divided by h. You should know that, let me remind you something, that cosine squared h plus sine squared h is equal to 1. This is an identity, right? So if we make this the subject, we're going to have something like cosine squared h equals 1 minus sine squared h. So I'm going to replace cosine squared h with 1 minus sine squared h to the top. So our expression becomes cosine x multiplied by cosine squared h is now 1 minus sine squared h. So we have 1 minus sine squared h. Don't forget we have minus 1 here. So you subtract 1. And don't forget to divide by h multiplied by cosine h plus 1. Then the next expression is minus sine x multiplied by sine h divided by h. We're still moving. From here you can see 1 minus 1 is 0. So to the top we only have negative sine squared h. And that negative can be multiplied by this cosine x because we are multiplying the whole of this. So we have this to be negative cosine x multiplied by just sine h, sine h, sine squared h, sorry. Then divide by h multiplied by cosine h plus 1, right? The minus sine x multiplied by sine h divided by h. Remember, we have not started applying the limit yet. We are still simplifying. So I would like to break down this because I know that sine squared h is the same thing as sine h times sine h. So this is equal to negative cosine x. I would like to show you every detail. Sine h times sine h divided by h uh, multiplied by cosine h, cosine h plus 1, then minus sine x times sine h divided by h. Okay, now we can split this, right? We can split it into sine h divided by h multiplied by sine h divided by cosine h plus 1. So this is equal to negative cosine x multiplied by sine h divided by h multiplied by sine h divided by cosine h plus 1, then minus sine x multiplied by sine h divided by h. So from here we can apply the limit. And what is the limit? Remember I stopped applying the limit from here. We would like to take the limit of the whole of this function as h approaches 0. I should know that those terms or expressions that contain x will not be affected because we are going to treat them as constants. Remember, limit of a constant is still the constant. So wherever we have the h, that is where we are going to apply the limit. We are going to apply it on this, on this, and on this. And those that contain x, you leave them as constants. So we take the limit. We have this to be equal to negative cosine x multiplied by the limit as h approaches 0. I would like to combine the whole of this together. We have sine h divided by h multiplied by sine h divided by um, cosine h plus 1. Then we have minus sine x multiplied by the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h divided by h. 
now we can directly substitute h equal to 0. But remember that we have treated this limit in our previous lesson using squeeze theorem. And we realize what? The limit uh, as h approaches 0 of sine h divided by h is equal to 1. So we have no problem with this and I don't have to repeat it. You can watch the previous lesson in order to find out how to evaluate the limit as h approaches 0 of the function sine h divided by h using squeeze theorem. This is equal to negative cosine x multiplied by, we know that this will give us 1 from squeeze theorem multiplied by, the moment you substitute 0 in here, you have cosine 0 and cosine 0 is what? 1 and 1 plus 1 is 2, so our denominator is 2. But sine 0 is 0, 0 divided by 2 will give us 0, so the whole of this is 0. Minus, we have sine x here, which is this one. From squeeze theorem, this is equal to 1. Remember, in our previous lesson, multiply by 1. So you can see that 0 times 1 times negative cosine x will give us 0. So the whole of this will be 0. Minus sine x times 1 is sine x negative. And 0 minus sine x is equal to negative sine x and hence we have just proven that the derivative of cosine x is nothing but negative sine x which we have here previously this is the derivative of cosine x which is negative sine x we have just proven that using the first principle and hence we conclude that the derivative of cosine x with respect to x is nothing but negative sine x as simple as that. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting videos. Bye bye.